All right, guys, welcome back to the shack. Today, I was going to do a quick follow-up video on my 3D printer. Uh, as many of you know, I started out doing primarily lasers, got over into the CNC now, and but then 3D printing, just it was one of those things that I felt like it'd be a very, very valuable tool for what I do dealing with lasers. I've always liked to try to engineer my own processes and my own fixes for things, and so I got into the 3D printers. Uh, you may or may not know, I started out with the Ender version three, uh, Ender three version two Neo. Uh, and the reason I got the machine was because from my research, it was the most affordable machine that I could get that had the capability of making small things like I was wanting to make and doing a good job of it. And so that's what I wound up going with. Well, since then I have added the Sonic pad to the mix and been messing with the machine, like calibrating everything, getting it set up. And so I wanted to do a video after you know a couple of months of having the machine and doing a lot of different prints with it, kind of give you a little information on where I'm at, where I stand as far as my purchase. Do I have buyer's remorse? Uh, and my, <laughs> how's it working out for me? So if that's something you're interested in, stick around and we'll be right back. All right, guys, just to give you a look at what I'm working with, this is my little station inside. This is uh, my little desk that I use when I'm inside working on stuff. And there's the uh, 3D printer sitting next to it. Uh, the, the Sonic Pad, I've got it more or less set up on the desk so that I can access it while I'm sitting there, you know, checking emails, uh, doing whatever I need to do. And then I've got the machine set up beside it. Now, I do have the enclosure. It's not really necessary. I just, you know, wanted the whole package. So I went ahead and got the enclosure. Uh, it does kind of hide it, you know, because like I said, it's the thing sitting in my living room. So uh, there's my custom knob I've made for it. I've did all the white accents for all the tracks, uh, put those on there, and got the camera installed. I'm running the Logitech, I think it's like the 933 Logitech camera. I'll, I'll drop links down below for that. But uh, as you can see, the screen's pretty much a zombie once you run the Sonic Pad. But that's my setup. Moving forward, you'll know what I'm talking about, guys. First off, uh, just to let you guys know, this is the kind of things that I wanted a 3D printer for, okay? These little brackets and holders and covers for the lasers and for the other machines, you know, I'm always finding something that I want that didn't come with the machine to kind of tweak it, make it a little bit better, especially with cable management and stuff like that. Uh, the latest thing is I've actually started printing things to, you know, make my 3d printer a little better uh, i've went with a black and white theme for my 3d printer because apparently that's what people do is you theme out your 3d printers and it's fun so i've been doing that uh, and i'll give you a little quick walkthrough of what my setup looks like it is in the house and the reason being is because it's really dusty out here and let's face it guys i'm out of room uh, so i keep my 3d printer in the house uh, that way it can be running while i'm out here in the shop well the one downside to that is being able to monitor it. Uh, I have looked at different camera options or whatnot, but I decided that I wanted to be able to remote interface with the machine, monitor it, and that type of thing. Also, I want to make some pretty cool videos, and uh, I, I'll drop one up here for you to see. Uh, the time lapse option was pretty cool, so I decided to go with the Creality Fusion Pad or Sonic Pad, and uh, I got it set up, got it on there, and a lot of the people that I see buying the Sonic Pad do so because they want to go really, really fast. They want to cut down on print times. Well, my findings with my machine are that the machine doesn't do that well. You start speeding it up too much. There's so many variables, uh, temperature settings and, and all that. It just, I don't get the quality prints that I wanted to when I'm trying to maximize the speed. So what I've did is I've basically reconfigured it, changed some settings. And it is faster than it was before. It's like twice as fast. I'm running about 100 millimeters a second as opposed to 50 millimeters a second previously. But I'm not doing the 200 millimeters a second. I've got it to where it, it turns out really nice products at that speed. And it takes probably about half the time as what it did before I attached the Sonic Pad. So I'm just going to kind of walk you through my setup, show you what everything looks like. And then we'll get into software. And I'll kind of give you a little you know, just a look at the software. I'm not going to be doing a lot of install and setup and all that. There's some really, really good videos out there that I've used to set mine up. 
and I just don't see the need in me going through it. I just want to give you my opinion of the product, of the machine, and the combination of the two, and uh, that way maybe you can make your own decision. So let's move over to the computer, and I'm going to walk you through some of the things that the Sonic Pad adds as far as accessibility to the machine. I'm currently printing a part for the Niji. Uh, I've, I've upgraded and put me a Air Assist module on the machine, but Niji did not include a bracket to mount the relay with. So I've designed one in Fusion 360 and I'm printing it. But this is, this is what I wanted with the setup. Not so much to get those blazing speeds, to, but to be able to monitor the print, see where the print is and know when it's done out here in the shop without having to walk back and forth to the house to check on everything. So this was the reason I got it. So the, the added speed, that's just more or less a bonus for me, but this adds a lot of functionality. And I'm gonna like go over here and show you on the computer what it looks like firsthand. All right guys, not sure why I keep getting this error, taking time-lapse photo, time-lapse frame. Uh, I think it's a confliction between the Sonic Pad and the software uh, interface, but it actually is taking videos or has been. So this is my uh, my little design that I just came up with, and I don't know why I'm getting this stringing right here, this little mesh stringing. I've been having a little bit of an issue with that, playing around with the temperatures. Uh, as you can see, I've kind of got my temperatures up just a little. I don't know that that's necessary. I've been you know, slowly playing with those. Uh, as you can see right here, this monitors the temperature of the, both the extruder and the bed. And so typically, uh, Creality Slicer will set them at 200 degrees for the extruder and 60 for the heater bed. Uh, but I've been kind of pulling that up a little bit just to see if, uh, if it helps with uh, everything sticking together and uh, making nicer engraves. And so far, it's doing a really good job or nicer engraved, nicer prints. So far, it's doing a really good job. I've just been noticing a little bit of the stringing. Uh, I was using the uh, park function to take the videos with, but that was really causing some problems. So I'm still working through that. But all in all, uh, a little bit of sandpaper after they're over with, and uh, I've, I've had some pretty good prints. But you can control pretty much everything. You can see this is the, this is the file here, and the way that this thing works, guys, you can actually go in and you can add your files to the machine remotely. So that's what I wanted. I, that's handy. I don't have to fool with the little SD card. I simply design the file out here at the shop, uh, slice it, and then upload it to the Sonic Pad so that I can uh, go back and print it uh, later if I want to. Uh, and you'll see these are some of these are uh, off a of Thingiverse. Uh, a couple of these I'm going to wind up. See, I keep getting that error. I got to figure that one out. But these are all files. The Niji 4 Max Air Relay Holder, that's the file that I'm printing now that I just made this morning. I've got the uh, knob that I designed for the uh, Creality. And the reason I did that is it came with a blue one, but I wanted to go with that whole black and white theme that I've got going. So I've made all these things to, uh, to kind of take the place of the one that came from the factory. And I've just been enjoying designing files. I've got a camera mount that I built here, and of course the the, the holders for uh, the cables on the uh, sculpt phone. And I've got a couple more files that I haven't put on it yet because I haven't needed to print those. But this is where you would put those, and you can basically uh, go in here and do a print queue, or you can start them from here. Uh, the time lapse, it's pretty awesome. Uh, I'll show you this one. This is actually the knob that I printed. Uh, I'm trying to figure out how to get the videos to be a little longer, so I've been playing with those settings. But as you can see, it, it basically takes a picture as it's growing or being printed. Uh, and it's done, I've done several so far, and it works pretty good. Uh, let me show you this. I did learn that if you're going to print something really, really small, uh, there's a lot more to the settings. Oh, I really messed the settings up on this little Statue of Liberty. I either need to make it bigger or I need to uh, adjust my settings uh, because some of the parts weren't big enough for the settings that I set to uh, be effective. And this is when I was first playing with the camera, getting it set up. Lighting is terrible. I've been trying to fix that too. But as you can see, a lot of stringing going on. And that's the big problem I've been having uh, with trying to run those excessive speeds is getting that right balance uh, for all the settings. I mean, it turned out okay. 
but there was a lot of uh, cleanup to do after this thing printed. And these little fine pieces here at the top, it did not do a really good job of those with the settings that I had it set for. So, but that was that's pretty awesome as far as the video goes. Uh, that functionality, I think, is going to benefit me. But you can, like I said, you can go in here and look at pretty much anything having to do with the printer. Uh, all these little sections, you've got the macros. You can change the speeds of the fans, which that's... That I think that's probably where my problem is. Is I think I'm getting some overcooling uh, that I've got to, you know, mess with a little bit. Uh, you can see here the printer limits, uh, the acceleration, the velocity, but the acceleration. I think I, I, I've still got a lot of playing to do with my settings. So I, this is not a perfect way to set your machine up, guys. This is a this is what this thing can do, and it can make your life a little easier. Uh, it just it's a lot better to me to use the pad than it is to uh and see i keep getting those errors uh it's a lot better to me to use the pad than it is to uh use the offline controller and for the price for 150 bucks it gives you the camera capability the remote monitoring capability uh being able to see all of this on your computer i just think it's a i think it's a good investment if you uh if if remote access is what you want and see, it's not going to be much longer, guys. I'll have to go in there and take that thing off of the uh, printer. But that's about what I wanted to show you. Uh, like I said, all the settings for the machine, you do have the access to those in here. Uh, you can change the pad. You can check for updates, all that good stuff. So it's, it's really handy. I've still got a lot of work to do. These, if you're doing really, really small items, you do have to go in here and uh change a lot of settings but guys i am still learning this 3d printing stuff and it is a uh it's quite the rabbit hole uh because it's not like a laser it's not like a cnc there's a way more variables with 3d printing than there is with the lasers and cncs so all right let's jump back out to the shop guys all right guys so if any of you were on the fence about the fusion uh, the sonic pad i don't know why i keep wanting to call it fusion it's fusion 360 sonic pad but if anybody was on the fence about the sonic pad just know that the really 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 fast engraves with the ender 3 version 2 neo i don't think though the, the results are going to be what you want you do get a speed boost but i would kind of slow it down from what you know what the machine actually wants to try to do it at Just back that down like I said, 100 millimeters a second is faster than the 50 millimeter a second average that the machine previously ran. So I've got a big speed increase without compromising the quality of the, the build so far. So if you're wanting it for the remote capabilities, for the monitoring, for the customization, the easy upload, then just know <laughs> you're not going to get the 250 millimeters a second with this machine. Now, I do have plans to hopefully upgrade to the k1 max shortly uh but for now i'm still trying to learn on the ender 3 and once i get you know ready to pull the trigger i will be upgrading uh the machine and have a larger machine to be able to do bigger things if i want so i hope the video was helpful i'll be dropping links down below for all the stuff like i said this is uh this is not my typical review of equipment that people send me all these items I've purchased, I've put it together uh, because it was something that I wanted to do. So uh, this is just my personal opinion on the equipment and how you should uh, expect for it to work for you. So check those links out down below. If you're interested in getting the Sonic Pad, I will put Amazon links down there. And uh, until next time, guys, be safe. Have a good day.